Got a real fun one uh, working on currently. This is a 2010 E450 with a V10 gasser. And the engine's out of it. Um, I like this lift I've got going here. A couple of jack stands. The only way I can get my belly under it. So here's the engine, and we've got a combination of problems. First problem was they were complaining about an oil leak, and the second problem was they had a terrible exhaust leak. We had not one, not two, not three, but six broken studs. Three on this side, and three on this side. So the combination of that plus the oil leak was way back here in the back of the engine. So the combination of those two things, we just opted to remove the motor. Um, there's the only way I can get in there and do any drilling. So we removed the motor to, to square this away. So we're getting ready to drill, getting ready to drill this broken stud right here. And I figure I would uh, share share the joy. When it comes to getting these broken studs out, there are many, many ways to do this job. Um, and I've tried them all. You can weld them uh, to extract them. You can you know, send them to the machine shop and get someone else to do it. But uh, there's a company that makes a drill template to drill these things and then super successful with drilling them. Um, they've changed the name of it. I'm going to put um, a link to their website in the description. It's just an incredible, incredible product. And there are a lot of uh, a lot of people have copied it and made their own and put them on the market. And nowhere near the quality of of these that I have right here. And um, this fellow named Bidler, all right, and he makes these CNC templates, and it's just an incredible, incredible product. Um, you, you just can't beat it. Um, there used to be, you know, uh, Bidler CNC, I think was the, the name of the company, and they changed it to Mana Bolt Driller or something like that. Um, but anyway, I'll get you a link to the website and you can check this out for yourself if it's an exhaust bolt on the big three it, even some of the imports i think they have now but the big three in particular they have a plate for it if if it's a problem area that breaks manifold bolts you know like i have the five four uh four six five four six eight are all the same obviously and the six liter six four they're the same so i have those templates so let's have a look at these so here's an assortment of stuff all right so this is a six liter kit uh, template, five four template, obviously. And then you have these clamps, all right. And so the way this works is, this is the hardware to bolt the plates down. And we have this nice chamfer that will fit into that chamfer is what I'm trying to say, and it'll center it. So when you bolt it down to an existing bolt hole, you get a nice center. If for some reason you had an existing stud still in place, they've got these. They'll slide over the stud, and then you can put a nut on it. I replace all the studs every time. I don't never use reuse the stud. But then you've got this place right here. And the clamps, they have the same bevel that will fit into that chamfer, and then it lines up with that. And you just put this guy down in here and it holds it in place these are super hard um, and your drill bit won't affect that and it, it centers it every time it's, it's never failed me ever and they make five clamps I only have four um, I've got eighth inch three sixteenths quarter 
And then I got 1764, so it brings you out to M8 by one and a quarter, which is what all these are on the Fords. So that's what I need. That's what I got. And the other one is a letter P. I, I don't know what size that is, but I don't need it. Um, they offer drill bits, and they offer this really nice spiral tap. I mean, this thing's nasty. It'll get the job done. But I really ever have to use it. Because when I drill out to the uh, 1764s, it brings you out to the factory thread. And then all you've got to do is simply chase it with an 8 by one quarter thread chaser. And it, it cleans it up every time. So, um, like a 6 liter, 6.4, I might use all four on one broken stud. But on these, these drill pretty easy. So we'll bolt the plate on. And then I'm just going to simply drill a pilot with the uh, eighth inch bit. And then we'll go straight for the gusto. And we'll go right for the, the full bore. So we only got to drill it twice. And then I've got my, my ghetto drill stops on here. Because we don't want to go too far. Wanna, the, um, the pocket that this screws into is about 3 sixteenths deeper than this but a lot of times uh, all mine are broken down below this shoulder uh, but the threads are so screwed up that a left hand bit won't catch it and pull it out sometimes you'll get lucky but this thing's got a lot of heat going on in it you know being an ambulance so um, during the drilling process a lot of these are to break loose and screw all the way down into the bottom so you don't have a pocket at the bottom so you really have to put your your drill stops on there and I don't do a lot of drilling so I don't have a lot of fancy stuff so painter's tape works just fine so let's set it up and do some drilling now this one had three three broken studs in this area we had this one broke this one broke and this one broke and I was doing a test fit to make sure this would go all the way down and it will but I'm gonna leave it in there I don't need to take it back out I don't want to take it back out let's put it that way I'm gonna make sure this is all clean. I'm gonna make sure this is clean. I'm gonna put this. And I need this insert on this side because I gotta put my clamp here. So we'll just screw this down with the remaining spots. This guy on here and bolt it down. Just a regular bolt. And you can see how that can move around. When we put this, we get this threaded down on here, it'll center it. Tighten that down, brings everything into alignment and everything in the center. There again, I'm just going to make sure it's centered and there's no debris under any of this, no uh, chips or anything like that. I'm having to use a 90 degree drill because I've got this thing on the lift. It's such an odd, this uh, engine hoist on, it's such an engine stand is the word I'm trying to say. And it's at such a, a weird position that, you know, just everything's in the way. So I'm using a 90 degree instead of a straight.
once I get to a certain point, I'll remove the clamp and get the shavings out of there because there's just nowhere for them to go. thread ends where the bolt used to be and it's walked itself all the way to the bottom of the bore so it's way it's way down in there now but unfortunately no matter what I do I can't get that to I won't be able to reverse that back out so we're gonna go ahead and hit that with the um, hard for you guys to see. I'm going to go ahead and hit that with the uh, with the big boy drill bit. Uh, friggin' lift. Can't get it in there with the... I'm going to kind of marry this thing together, which I don't like doing, but... Better than doing this on a tire.
sure our clamp is centered. Lube it. Get you in here a little better. Uh, I don't know if you can see better without the light, even though I can't see. But in this case, no good. Let me play with this for a minute. About right there, you can see we've exposed all the factory threads right to the bottom. Okay. I'm going to chase that. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put you way back here because i got to blow some compressed air in there. So let me blow those shavings out. Take my eight by one and a quarter thread chaser. Put her in here. See if we can clean these threads up a little bit. back out and take a look at the threads down in there. We should have broke some of that crud loose. You just can't see down in here. 
So we broke some of the old thread from the old bolt loose. I'm going to blow it out. We'll continue to do that so we don't have anything but clean threads in there. And lubricate chaser. Lube. I'm just using like a WD-40. Nothing special. No real machine shop stuff here. So I'm just going by feel and I can hear it kind of clicking and popping and snapping and knocking those threads right out of there, exposing the factory threads. Which is good because then we don't have to we don't have to run a tap down in there. Because if we run a tap down in there, it'll cut new threads along with the existing threads and uh, it just weakens what you've already got. And uh, we don't want to weaken what we've got. We want to build, build upon, restore what was already in there. When we get to the bottom, this will just stop. You know, the secret to something like this, I mean, it's just, I mean, you can't be in a hurry, you can't flat rate this thing. You gotta, you know, slow and steady wins the race. You do all this work and screw one up, and then you gotta helicoil it, or worse, you gotta take the head off. You gotta get it to the machine shop or something. We don't wanna get ourselves into that predicament. So, just take it nice and easy. Already drilled. Five of these. I don't want to get to the sixth one and then uh, <clears throat> lose the whole job. So what I'm doing now is I got a thread broke down here from the, the old bolt. So I'm just wrangling it out of there, kind of bending it, crushing it up, so I can blow it out of there. It's being stubborn. Way down the bottom. You guys see that? That's what I had left down in the bottom of the hole there. And that's the original stud. So now, this should tap right back down in there all the way. Got a little bit more crud in there. Let's, let's see. So we'll put the new stud in. Let's see if it bottoms out.
than it did. So let's take the plate off. And we're right tight, right bottomed out. But those are good to go. And that concludes it. We're done. Thank God. So that was the last one. Like I said, these three were broken. Um, now I'll just clean that off. Uh, pull my little bits of uh, napkin out of there. I'll retape it because I got to tear the motor down now to to uh, do all the gaskets. And I'll put all these studs in. Go ahead and get them in there and get them out get them out of my inventory list. I don't have to keep up with them. And the manifold, <clears throat> this manifold is a thousand dollars, one thousand dollars. A 5.4 liter looks like that. That's what a 5.4 manifold looks like. You can get the whole manifold, both gaskets, all the studs, and all the nuts and washers, 200 bucks. This by itself is a thousand. And the other one's 600. So we didn't want to price set up out of, a, out of a job, so we sent this to a machine shop. And you know, I laid a straight edge on this. When I put the straight edge on it, it would just wobble. And now um, let's put let's put the straight edge back on it. I don't have you guys on a tripod, so. This is a snap-on straight edge, one of the better ones on the market. Now you know you you know you're selling good quality tools when the manufacturer promotes them. This is what actually Ford wants you to use: is this GA 438A um, for a straight edge. I'm not gonna get a feeler gauge out, but on a you know before we had it planed, you can see daylight under that straight edge. So they did a good job. Did a real good job. So the next step, um, the next step I'll do is um, I'm, probably, I'm gonna film taking this engine apart because I haven't filmed anything in a while, and you know I'd like to. I don't want you guys to lose interest in my channel. Um, so it, it's it's quarter after six. It's time to go home. Yeah, gotta go home, do the family thing. So tomorrow morning when I come in, I will uh, continue on. I'll turn the camera on right away, and we'll we'll pick up where we left off here tonight.